Hi, I am Dr. Indira Natarajan, Consultant Stroke Physician and Clinical Director of Neurosciences at the Royal Stoke University Hospital, Stoke-on-Trent. I'm now going to take you through the poster about the use of Gecko device, a neuromuscular electrostimulation device, and the resulting activation of the foot and calf muscle pumps for the prevention of venous thromboembolism in patients with acute stroke. As you are all aware, venous thromboembolism is a common and potentially fatal complication of acute stroke. And uh, the N National Institute of Clinical and Health Excellence and the UK National Clinical Guidelines for Stroke have clearly emphasized that pharmacological BTE prevention should not be routinely used. And the reason why they've said that is at present, we do not have a mechanism to identify patients who are at high risk of uh, VTE compared to outweigh the risk of hemorrhagic complications. So as it is difficult, the only evidence that we have uh, which is accepted as a guidelines is from the CLOTS-3 trial where IPC was found uh, to improve VTE prevention compared to rest of the interventions. So as a standard of care, the first line of venous thromboembolism prevention is by starting the patients on IPC, which is otherwise called intermittent pneumatic compression. We were aware that there were alternatives to IPC called the neuromuscular electrostimulation devices, but clearly they were not used in this cohort of patients. And as a stroke unit, seeing around 1,200 confirmed strokes through our doors, we felt there was an unmet need in our population. Around 30% of the patients who had stroke and who needed VTE prophylaxis were either had contraindications to wear the IPC device or were not able to tolerate it. And this 30% of patients, we are not very keen to take a risk of starting them on pharmacological VT intervention. At this time, we were introduced to this device called the Gecko device, developed by First Kind Limited, which is a neuromuscular electrical stimulation device. And we thought that possibly there might be a role for this device in the group of patients where either had contraindications or could not tolerate it, which I use the phrase, the unmet need of these patients. So I'm just going to take you through a uh, uh, methodology and the population uh, about the patients who uh, were um, offered this uh, treatment. So as you can see from the um, slide in front of you on the poster, we are a, a tertiary neurosciences center. We see around 1,200 patients with suspected stroke uh, coming through our doors per annum. Um, and we are a 32 bedded hyperacute and acute stroke unit and we are a comprehensive stroke unit offering thrombolysis and thrombectomy. So we slightly tweaked our pathway uh, to meet the unmet need of this 30% of patients. So every patient uh, who has had a stroke and who's immobile, we will start them on generic treatment measures like hydration, early mobilization, and aspirin 300 milligrams as standard of care. And then as the first line treatment as per the uh, UK stroke uh, guidelines and the NICE guidelines, we will put them on IPC. As I'd already mentioned, on the patients who could not tolerate the IPC or had a contraindication for IPC, we put them on the Gecko device. So we changed our pathway uh, in such a way that patients who had the unmet need had an alternative treatment option as a part of the prophylaxis. Uh, in this part of the poster, we are going to look at the contraindications to IPC. The four major contraindications for using of uh, IPC as the first line uh, VT prophylaxis are high risk of falls, restless or agitation, people with peripheral vascular disease and leg ulcers. And on top of this, uh, there was a group of patients who were not able to tolerate IPC because the way the device operates is a sleeve around the legs uh, which is connected to a pump and the pump produces pressure which intermittently squeezes the calf muscles to, to keep the circulation and prevent the clots. Uh, the group of patients were not able to tolerate this because this was constantly happening day in and day out and um, people were finding it struggling to sleep at night and in, in total we felt that there was this 30% of patients who fell into the category where they could either 
not tolerate the IPC or had a clear contraindication to IPC. Now I'm just going to focus on a patient tolerance. In total, you can see that 116 of the patients were prescribed IPC. They were not able to tolerate the IPC. That amounts to around 21% of the IPC arm, whereas 21 patients were prescribed the gecko. 9.7% uh, of the population uh, were not able to tolerate it, and that is what has uh, been uh, emphasized and shown on this uh, uh, bar chart on the on the on the bottom of the poster. And now I'm just going to come to the most important part uh, to look at uh, what our observational study showed in terms of results. So what was the incidence of VTE uh, in this population group over a period of uh, uh, 90 days from the start of the project on every patient. So you can just see that at the end of the study when we looked at all the results our total VTE was around in 15 patients and you have to make sure that these are patients who had confirmed symptomatic uh, VTEs. So of the 1,000 patients, 15, per 15 patients had uh, VTE, 9 of them had DVT and 6 of them had PE. So that was our uh, total incidence uh, during the study. So overall that is a quite a good uh, sort of incidence um, uh, in terms of uh, looking at 1,000 patients. And if you break down to see which of the group of patients had the VTE, 11 patients developed uh, VTE were just prescribed on the IPC alone. That was around 2.4%. One patient, that was around 1.2%, was prescribed IPC and then switched on to the Gecko device as a secondary intervention. Uh, uh, one patient um, developed a VTE despite being on anticoagulation. And there was one VT event in patient who refused prophylaxis and one event in a patient who was deemed mobile where there was no need for uh, prescribed prophylaxis as per our uh, guidelines. And interestingly, there was no DVT or PE in patients treated with the Gecko device as a primary VT prophylaxis in this observational study. The bar chart here just uh, explains um, in terms of uh, exactly what I had said uh, about the split of the VTE on the 1,000 patients that uh, we uh, had uh, uh, included in our study. And this just graphically shows how the patients who had VTE, in total 15 of them, uh, were spread across all the um, uh, treatments that were offered. And clearly, what was interesting was uh, that uh, in this study where we looked at 1,000 patients where Gecko was uh, used as a, a primary intervention, none of them had the VT, whereas with IPC, the, in, uh, the um, total number of patients who developed a VT were 11, which was around 2.4%, whereas in the group that had IPC as the first line and then where Gecko was uh, transferred as a, a second line, we had around 1.5% uh, of the uh, population. Now coming to the conclusion, this audit clearly showed a low incidence of symptomatic venous thromboembolism in a high-risk population of immobile stroke patients. And as uh, I had already mentioned, it was around 1.5%, which is extremely good uh, uh, in, in, in terms of uh, the prophylaxis offered. And as I'd emphasized, we all the patients who needed intervention had aspirin, early mobilization, and hydration as standard of care. They had the IPC as the first intervention, and if they were having contraindications or if they could not tolerate, we used the gecko as the alternative device. This audit confirmed that the gecko is a safe and well tolerated in patients with acute stroke, and our data suggests that the device is as effective as IPC in our patient cohort. And what we picked up was that the total patients who were not able to get the IPC as the first intervention or could not tolerate was around 29.5%. And this was very similar to the cohort of patients that was described in the original CLOTH3 paper. And what we also learned was the Gecko device provided an alternative VT prophylaxis strategy in immobile stroke patients for the group of patients who were unable to tolerate the standard of care as per the national guidelines. 
the findings of this aus or audit was purely on an observational basis so we clearly need a randomized control study to provide evidence for effectiveness in comparison with established methods of BTE prophylaxis. Many thanks.